Throughout a turbulent time within the world, the Allied Nations of America stationed significant forces within Australia to prepare for the large-scale offensives that would be soon conducted throughout the Pacific Theatre. One US private soldier, Edward Joseph Leonsky, had committed a series of murders against three Australian women within the city of Melbourne in 1942 and had effectively earned himself the title as the Brownout Strangler. Media coverage of the crimes committed against the three women and the nature of the individual private Edward Joseph Leonsky, highlighting psychological issues with the individual and clearly establishes the victims and the murderer as such. Media coverage during this time, where the world had been engulfed in war, highlighted the clear and present danger these murders had represented in a time of great significance. For the women of Melbourne, the threat had become all too real. The murders committed by Private Leonsky, all of which committed at night, had subsequently heightened fear amongst the community, proving that especially during times of war, wherein allies from other countries stationed in your own can still pose a significant threat. With each of the three victims' clothing found torn, the initial indication was to assume that the killer had displayed notions of sexual assault. However, closer examination led to the discovery of identical patterns in how the victims' clothing were torn. Their clothes had been torn in exactly the same way, ripped from the neck downwards. The nature in which these indices occurred enabled the media to conjure the nickname the Brownout Strangler for the fact that each strangling had occurred at night, emphasising the horror and mystery behind the killer. In the tabloid Leonsky Enigma in Life and in Death on November 15th of 1942, effectively highlighting the nature of Leonsky, with use of the phrase, no emotion whatsoever, the media enabled an understanding into the nature of the killer, implying that despite his actions had led him to his imminent death, no physical display of emotion had been conceived, thereby implying the nature of Leonsky as a cold and ruthless character, even at the face of his own death. Within the sentence, previous hangings at the jail have genuinely had a disturbing effect on prisoners hours before the dread sentence was carried out, had only further escalated the viewer's perception of Edward Leonsky, effectively establishing him as an emotionless character, seemingly unfazed by the murders that he had committed and the looming dread that his life will soon be put to a swift end as a consequence of these murders. Throughout the span of the murders committed, the media attributed to the nature of the victims, highlighting Miss Mary Agnes Earle as well-refined, well-spoken and sweet-tempered. They cannot advance any theory for her death. The statement provides the reader with a clear notion that Miss Earle was one of peaceful character, one that have harboured no enemies, effectively highlighting the thought of her engaging in any form of ill will or violence towards another person was simply inconceivable and outrageous to her character. Although how police officials at the time were unable to successfully identify the attacker in the case of Miss Earl, the act had left police similarly puzzled as her murder too consisted of significant familiar factors being that the death was due to strangulation and no signs of sexual assault had been con con conceived. Thus, left police officials wondering if, in fact, Leonsky had committed another murder. Within the article, Third Brownout Murder in Melbourne, media grabs attention at the notion that another murderer may, in fact, be committing the same crimes as Leonsky or perhaps in league with Leonsky. Robert Joseph Lacey of Preston, a soldier, was charged with committing a criminal assault. He was remanded on bail of $500 until May 26. However, 
as the as the female victim of Lacey was not killed, the idea of another murderer soon proved fruitless. Wherein, with the discovery of Miss Gladys Hoskins body within a trench inside Royal Park, which was at the time in close proximity to the US soldiers military camp stationed in Melbourne since the beginning of 1942, had further alarmed the public as an attack on a woman and the recent discovery of another's body found so close to an allied armed force raised significant concerns for the Melbourne community. As evidence regarding Leonsky's nature came to light for the purpose of the media to successfully acknowledge him as both deranged and murderous, the use of language throughout testimonies within the article Low Type Trick on Killer's Mother was effectively utilised, highlighting the early onset characteristics and traits of Leonsky and had enabled the reader to establish Leonsky as a troubled individual from an early age, thus harbouring no form of sympathy for him. As described as lonely, heartsick, tenement boy, suddenly deprived of all sense of comfort and personal love. This testimony, along with others from psychologists, had effectively analysed his early life to his killings as symbolic matricide. Being labelled as a mama, mama's boy, the media effectively highlights his nature as an individual with a disturbing relationship with women. With his own words, the killings of these women was to get at their voices, a statement that later became heavily utilised by the media in addressing their characteristics of Leonsky and to convey the correct assumption of Private Leonsky that in fact he was an incredibly disturbed individual that harboured hatred of women at an early age and as indicated from his own mother thus constituting the nature of his crimes as symbolic matricide. As it is effectively shown, the 1942 media in relation to the illustrations of Leonsky and his murders enabled the readers with significant knowledge into the characteristics of Private Leonsky, as well as establishing the victims. Throughout the testimonies and the use of language for both Leonsky and his victims, or supposed victim in the case of Mary Agnes Earle, accurately highlighted the nature of Leonsky as a greatly disturbed individual targeting innocent and well-kept women of Melbourne that had harboured no amnesty towards another human, but were simply in the wrong place in the wrong time, placing their trust in a, in a smiling American soldier who they, they may have met on the night of their murders a man brought over to help protect Australia from foreign threats during a time of war, for them to succumb to his twisted psychological issues, being that a personal vendetta against women.